Hi, good, uh, good afternoon everyone and thanks for uh, joining us today. My name is Lorenzo Bossi, I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager at Composite and joining me today is uh, Jonathan Evans, our Application Engineer. Hello everyone. So today's uh, webinar will last around uh, one hour. Uh, we'll keep some time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. Uh, but if you have those at any time, please feel free to type on the um, right hand side of your screen. Uh, I should say questions, just expand the little panel and type in your question um, so that we can prepare the answers for the end of the webinar. This webinar will also be recorded and uploaded to the um, Composite webpage and YouTube channel um, so you can review any parts if you missed it. Uh, but we'll also upload all the um, documents and deliverables that we'll be showing uh, to you today, uh, PDF reports of scantling or bill of materials alongside with laminate tables and section reports. Okay, so let's jump over. For today's agenda, we'll start with a brief introduction to Composite and give you an overview of uh, Yotscant. Uh, we'll then jump straight into the live demonstration with uh, the vessel setup and um, topology definition, material selection, laminate definition, beams and panels, um, and also highlight some of the automated reporting capabilities we have. We'll conclude the session, as mentioned, with questions and answers. So in order to introduce um, Composite and its capabilities, I think what is important to consider is that Composite is an integrated um, suite of tools or models that interact together in order to accompany you throughout the entire uh, product or vessel development process. So we'll be seeing initially how to set up projects and vessels, how to select the materials and build our laminates, uh, and also how to perform our engineering calculations, whether those are analysis is in finite element methods or analytical scantling calculations and also how to generate um, reports, bill of materials, counseling reports for certification. So in order to do that, Composite has a number of dedicated modules. The first one is going to be um, Project Space. So Project Space allows you to manage your projects. Now by project, what we mean is um, a defined set of data uh, with customized safety factor, failure setting, bill of material settings, accessible to a number of users within your organization. Uh, from project space, you're able to create, but also archive and securely store uh, the projects in uh, the Composite servers, and also manage all the user rights, so you can have guests able to just view the projects. You can have uh, users and project managers with different, live, uh, different uh, type of rights. Inside Project Space, you'll also be able to manage all the materials, plies, and laminates alongside with the products, beams, and panel loads and reports for uh, a given product. CMDB and PlyGen are the modules dedicated to the uh, material database. So CMDB effectively stands for the Composite Materials Database. And those modules basically allow you to build your own material library. Uh, we do supply a certain number of base materials, let's say around 60, for you to get started, but you can otherwise import your own materials via Excel or other means into Composite itself. You can also create new plies and new materials using PlyGen and uh, micromechanical calculations, and also use a reference material data in order to calculate strain, strains and strengths. Uh, you can imagine that when you have maybe a few hundreds or thousands of materials, um, what Composite allows you is to browse easily for the properties for calculations, search by specific properties or specific material type, but also compare materials through uh, normalizations or visualize and select your materials through um, scatter plot visualization. In Composite, materials are primarily organized as a company library versus what is a project material. It allows you to have maybe, as mentioned, hundreds to thousands of uh, company materials, but only work with the shortlisted one for your, own, for your current active project. Now, CMDB is primarily a material database management tool. Um, as I mentioned, only supplies around 60 materials, but we also have an option to provide you with 1,250 materials 
uh, does include core, fibers, adhesive, resins, and also non-composites such as woods, plywoods, plastic, metals, and close to 900 different plies. All those materials are manufacturing independent and we are provided with characteristic values from multiple sources, which can be some standards, internal testing, external testing, product testing, and so on. It's important to understand that uh, those uh, thousand plus materials are all fit for design and FEA. That means that you're able to perform all your needed calculations with the data set that are provided. There are no missing properties that will stop you from performing your engineering activities. Alongside those, there are options to export to CAD or finite element analysis softwares for materials, plies, and also laminates. And those are named the ANSYS Nastran Optistracting Radius with native export files. Alternatively, there is always the, uh, the favorite Excel file and API, which allows you to connect directly to the composite database and create your own scripts and formats. Just a brief overview of how those uh, material libraries in interact together. So we have on the left uh, our three menu, typical of uh, composite. And as you can see, I have in my company material close to 60 materials. This is the standard one provided with any um, new composite customer. And you can import your own material, as I mentioned, in this private library. The CS material library is what is defined the CMDB add-on that I mentioned earlier. Um, around 1,250 uh, uh, plus materials. Um, you can simply drag and drop those into your company or your own project materials to use them immediately. And then active project materials is just the one that are used uh, in the current and active project helps you to, as I mentioned, just shortlist from a wide number of materials the ones you want to act, uh, actively work with. Furthermore, you can define those through a number of uh, material sub-selection, in this case it's hard as if carbons and cores, uh, but otherwise you can select the format that best suits your purposes. <coughs> okay, so after the uh, materials and plies, we, came, we come to a um, laminar space. Laminar space is the tool dedicated to the extended classical laminate theory. It allows you to define your laminates, selecting the materials and plies in the database, and you can uh, create either uh, entire families, base laminates, or an infinite number of sublaminates. As part of the evaluation tools included, you can review engineering constants, allowables, true, shear, uh, true thickness shear, sandwich stability, analyze in different cases with loads, and also review coefficients of uh, thermal expansion. Laminar space also acts as a central storage for your laminates across projects allows you to review and store all the laminates. You can also output uh, automatic uh, detailed reports or directly create shell and export laminate tables to Excel or FEA. The next, uh, the next tool part of the um, composite suite is section space. Um, is a 2D and a beam modeling tool allows you to import or create and model your own geometries uh, through a definition of thin wall or solid sections. And there are um, basically contextual menus allow you to apply any laminate or material uh, to any of those sections. And I say material, it can be either um, uh, apply you, you have created or it can also be metals, plastic, plywoods is your choice. It allows us to quickly evaluate uh, section properties, perform uh, some uh, load capacity analysis, and review allowable loads and reserve factors. And obviously, basic, this, this means we are able to provide a very quick iterative uh, section design and optimization look um, straight within Composite in, in a matter of minutes. If you're looking for some more um, complex modeling, then FE Space is the tool dedicated to 3D modeling uh, and FEA. Um, similar to Section Space, you can import your own geometries or create them with an inside composite. And in terms of uh, finite element modeling, it features an automatic measure, which also allows you to provide local refinements where needed. Uh, the solver supports linear backing and model analysis. And all calculations are really created uh, in um, created in FE space are sent to the server where they are stored and they can be retrieved uh, later on for review whenever it's done. 
that also means that different people working on the same project, uh, you don't need to send gigabytes of, uh, of files. Um, they actually just collaborate on the same project and can access all those results together without having to send emails or, or give paths to uh, results files and, and so on. The FE space also features uh, topology management, which allows you to basically create uh, geometry based on uh, beam models and uh, sections created in section space, and then basically to retake those sections back into the section space environment, modify them, review the results, and then bring those back into FE space, hence facilitating a bit of the, the three-dimensional design side of things alongside with the conceptual design phase. Uh, finally, Composite uh, provides an integrated and automated uh, reporting and versioning engine. There are a number of reports for laminates, uh, sections, bill of material, um, scantling reports that are defined on our standard templates, or you can also create your own custom templates. All the reports can be, can be issued, can be revised, can be shared via HTML, so you can share a link, and anyone following it, even months later, will always have the latest uh, version issued of the report, or if you prefer, you can save and share the PDF files directly. The BOMGEN or Below Material Generation module, which is part of uh, Report Space, allows you to automatically create a bill of materials. So it collects all the information from your materials, plies, and laminates, um, loads all the um, um, all the areas, the surfaces and the weights from the section and the 3D FE models and basically links everything together to give you a detail, a detail or a summarize or a detailed bill of material uh, for your entire product or project. It's also, um, it's also possible when you make modification in a model to directly update the, uh, the bill of material and once again reissuing a new one shared via HTML will basically give you always an updated version of, of that uh, of the document. You can include your uh, base material costs. Um, that would allow uh, BombGen to basically load in the basic costs of, your, uh, of, your, of each of your materials. And if you select, um, and actually you can also select the type of processing you want to adopt or manufacturing process, and uh, BombGen will automatically apply usage and wastage factors that have been uh, defined uh, initially by Composite but it can also review, for example, if you're deciding to use um, autoclave or vacuum infusion or hand layout, um, you're free to fine-tune those values to get something which is closest um, to your own activities. And the last model is uh, Yoscant. Um, Yoscant is a modern uh, scanting tool, allows you to select uh, sailing or motor boats and output uh, reports uh, defined under the ISO or GL guidelines uh, with the addition recently of options to override pressure in case you would like to perform some other calculation or use uh, the same tool for other um, certification. YOSCAN includes vessel management uh, which allows you to define um, your topology. You can see later is something we can import, we can define, we can link from CAD. Uh, and then allows you to define beams and panels and also um, three three-dimensional elements uh, that you want to bring in. The scantling reports are fully um, automated and integrated within Composite so that whatever material we have used, uh, on how many beams or panels it has been applied, uh, will basically uh, taken, be taken into account uh, in, the, uh, in the summary and the final reports and it will output a um, fully featured uh, PDF or HTML file with all the, uh, all the data needed for your, um, to send to the certification houses. Okay, so after this uh, brief introduction, I think it's time for John to take on to the live demonstration. Thanks, Ranzi. Okay, so I think the main question to this webinar is, what can I do in Composite within my marine project? How can it help me to define my, my materials, my plies, my laminates, um, my panels, and, and my basic scantling? So in general, Composite can help with a lot of, um, a lot of engineering components within your vessel. 
So preliminary design, this is what we're going to focus on today in this first webinar, which is the design of a design and optimization of panels and beams. So this is primarily with, within Yachtscant. We can also do some more detailed designs. So for example, we can do a detailed design using laminar space to design our hold to deck joint. Uh, we can also do advanced modeling. So our uh, bulkhead design, for example, or we can do keel grillages, um, engine grillages, up to main sheet structures. It's quite, uh, quite varied in, in the capabilities. On the reporting side of things and the project side of things, we can create uh, automatic bill of materials, which what we can grab from here is um, laminate table reports, which fits nicely within your engineering drawings. So it's not just the reporting, the bill of materials, getting the weight, getting the cost of the, of the vessel. It's also helping you with your engineering drawings, your reporting to, to the shop floor as well. And also, if we design a vessel, we also want to get it uh, certified. So Yachtscan and Composite really helps in gathering all of the data that you've used to design automatically, um, as Lorenzo said, compiling it in one report, which you can then send off to get certified. So there really is a minimum, minimal amount of work required from your side on documentation and certification. Okay, so if we jump into uh, the yacht scout side of things, so today we're going to be doing uh, designing of, of beams and panels. The first step within our project is to define the project and vessel setup. Within Composide, you can have many different projects, assign users to different projects. Uh, this really allows you to, to work collaboratively on a worldwide basis. So you can have a lot of engineers working on their own little projects, collaborating on projects having all the same data uh, in one place. The next step is to define the topology. So we need to break up our, our vessel into different elements. So going simply, you've got a hull, you've got your deck, you've got your internals. You can break it down into a more, um, a more detailed breakdown of topology, but it's up to you um, depending on how you work, your type of vessel, how big your vessel is, and how you want to work. You've got your main inputs. So you've got your material selections where CMDB comes in and you've got your laminate definition. So this is where you build your stack up, which you're going to apply to your beams and your panels. From these, we have our base inputs for all of our analysis within Composite. So if we go on to design our bulkhead in, in FE space in a 3D shell model or our kill grillage in a in a, again, a 3D grillage model, uh, all of these inputs are the same. So you're always working with the same data. And if you change your material data, it'll automatically get updated upstream. So within Yachtscan, we need to define our panels and beams. Uh, we can do this manually. Then we get our initial design results out very, very quickly once we've imported our panel dimensions, inputs, um, and our laminates. Now from here, we can have a very quick optimization loop back into our inputs, play around with our laminate, add a few plies, remove a few plies, increase the core thickness, and really try and get that weight and cost down of your vessel. And again, as I said, all of this automatic upstream, uh, updating downstream is really useful in, in getting that optimization loop tuned and very quick. Then we have, once we've done our, on our analysis, we've got our laminates pretty much defined. We've got our final panel results. We can generate documentation. So this is our certification reports, our yacht scan reports. We can also generate uh, section space reports for certain sections, um, bill of materials reports, and uh, to individual laminate reports as well. So let's go through it live. Um, when we jump into Composite, the typical workflow is left to right. So we start in project space. Now, as I said, this is where you define your all of your project uh, parameters. So you've got your materials in here. So you see I've got a selection. I've got my laminates, which I've predefined. Uh, it's all available in one place. So if you've got a few different projects, you can, you can copy and paste them into, into different projects. 
This is where we also set up our topology of our boat. So as you can see here, we have our projects. We've got a few different projects. We've got a 60 foot cruiser racer and a 60 foot motorsports fishing boat. And we've got it broken down into a few different um, topology groups. So we've got our deck, we've got our hull, and we've got our internal, internal structure. So you can see that it's very, uh, very clearly laid out. This is very versatile. So as I said earlier, you can have as many groups or a few groups as you wish. Um, so let's try, let's uh, go into our products. So we're going to create a, a basic vessel. This is where we jump into Yachtscan through Project Space. So we've got our vessel. We can design it to ISO or GL. Um, so we're going to pick ISO. We can uh, obviously our name. So 60 foot sailing yacht. We've got our craft type, so motor or sailboat. Our waterline length, our displacement, uh, lightly, lightly loaded. And then we've got our, our ISO specific or GL specific uh, parameters. So they're all on the left here in the schema. Uh, we've got our design category, our hull length, our hull, hull depth um, up to the beam. So these are pretty standard inputs. Once we've got this, we will go, it will take you into your vessel. So you've got all your parameters uh, imported. You can see here along the top that we've got our analysis set up. So these are your ISO or GL specific guidelines or parameters or coefficients. We've got our bill of material settings. So these are usage and wastage factors that we're going to define um, or you can define. Compside gives you those base values, but you can you can tweak them if, if required. Along to our fiber rate requirements and our summary. So once we've finished our analysis, we can have a look over the the whole boat, have a look where we're critical and, and really get a good idea of everything that's going on in the boat, see where we can reduce weight or we maybe need to have a little bit of a thought on, on our spacing of frames, etc. Okay, so now our vessel is set up. The next thing we need to have a look at is, um, is our materials. So for this, we jump into CMDB. You can see I have a list of project materials on the left, which I've grabbed from our CMDB add-on tool. So there's a list of over 1,200 materials which you can you can drag and drop into into your project. You can also create these materials yourself. So you can either import them from Excel. You can create them using PlyGen just by using the processing type, uh, the matrix type, and the fiber type. It will give you um, the stiffness properties of your ply, and then you can just use a reference ply to get your strength properties. Now, you might be umming and ahhing about a few different materials. It's quite easy to compare these materials within Composite. So if I just select a few materials, I can use a scatter plot um, just to have a look, compare these materials against each other by all of the parameters that are within Composite. So if I want to go for uh, stiffness versus weight, so go tensile modulus versus density, we can very quickly have a look at, at which plies are, are going to be better than, than other plies. You can see that I've only got um, prepreg plies, epoxy plies in here, but you can, you can compare a multitude of other plies. If, for example, you want to understand the difference between the cost and the, and the weight or the cost and the stiffness of an infused ply versus a pre preg ply. It's very easy just to have a look at this. Now if you're using any other softwares, so you're using advanced FEA within, with, with, your, with your company, you can also have the ability to export these materials to Nastran Optistruct ACP or just export them to an Excel. So if you're working with spreadsheets you can just use Composite as your as your main material database. Okay. So now we have our material set up. The next thing to do would be to build a stack up. So for this, we jump into uh, laminar space, where you can see that I have a few different bulkhead, uh, a few different laminates: bulkhead laminate, hole laminate, deck laminate. I've got different groups as well. So if I want to group these into different areas of the boat, uh, it's very easy to do that. So let's create a new laminate. 
so we, we enter our, our laminate family name, so let's call this hull top sides, and our fiber type and manufacturing type. So these again are for our bill of material settings, so carbon and let's go for a pre-break. And we'll create this. Okay, so we, when, when we get into our lambda space, we want to start defining our stack up from the top to the bottom. So let's add a few plies in. So we'll, we'll go for a, a woven carbon, a 400 gram epoxy prepreg uh, at zero. And I'm also going to have a biaxial ply. So I'm going to add a ply, uh, XC, uh, standard modulus, let's go for 300 gram. And we want to orientate this at 45 degrees. So you can add as many plies as you want. Uh, you can play around with them once they're in. So if I grab two, two plies of this, uh, I can also just double click on the ply, edit it very quickly. If I want this at 30 degrees, for example, very quick to do. Now we're going to create a sandwich laminate. So I need to add a core and I'm going to go for a T10. Um, let's go for 100 kilo. And let's say this is about 20, 20 millimeters thick. Again, we can orientate this at the angle we want because T10 is orthotropic, so it depends on the orientation of this. So I'm going to orientate this at, at 90 degrees to really get my uh, my panel as stiff as I want in this, in a short span. So I'm going to add this to my stack. Now I want a symmetrical laminate, and I don't really want to do that same again. Um, so I'm going to use my sequence type as a symmetric odd so it's mirrored everything on the top um, to the bottom now this really comes in when you've got quite a detailed laminate maybe a bulkhead laminate with um, 50 different plies for your tapes your basic core your patches and you don't really want to reverse it and, and mirror it on the other side manually because that might take a while so what i can do is just use this symmetric sequence type to really uh, just define one side of it and then if I change anything on the top skin, it will automatically be mirrored on the bottom skin. If I then want to make it anti-symmetric, I can convert this to a total laminate, which will just make all of these plies black, which will indicate that I can, I can modify any other plies without it being um, affected on the other side of the skin. Now, if I want a single skin area as we do uh, in, in most most hulls or I want an area of more reinforcement what we're going to do is we're going to create a sub laminar. so this sub laminar is going to be a single skin again it's taken my prepreg um, and my carbon so what I have to do is select the plies and then assign them to my sub laminate so that's, that's as easy as it is, just creating a single skin area, just by using the tick boxes to select plies. Okay, so let's save and close. This is quite a basic laminate. Um, what it, what Comside is doing now is it's calculating all of, the, all of the properties of this laminate. So initially we've got our generic data, we've got our thickness, our weight, our density, and our price if we've got one in CMDB. We can also go into more detail. So, we can have a look at the engineering constants, our in-plane and out-of-plane constants, our allowables, so these are our allowable bending moments based on um, different direction moments and different failure modes, so fiber failure, resin failure, down to resin shear and skin wrinkling. And then further down it will give you a more in-depth um, understanding of, of how it's failing, where it's failing, and what kind of failure mode. We can also have a look at the sandwich stability. So this is a sandwich laminate. So we can have a look under different um, different conditions. So we can get our critical loads, critical stress, and critical strain based on uh, the type of failure that we're expecting to see. We can also apply manual loads. So we can apply bending moment, thermal loads, uh, in-plane loads, and it will give you um, reserve factors based on those loads which you can then, you can also grab that from later on in the software in FE space and bring those in so you, you're optimizing your laminate within laminate space using loads from a different model. So let's go into a more complex laminate. So this is our bulkhead laminate. You can see this is a huge laminate. Uh, let's compress the stack up. 
So we've got all of our tapes. We've got our starboard top tape, support top tape, starboard side tapes, and the list goes on. And we've also got our base laminate. We've got our core, uh, our base uh, area. We'll have a, an area of compression tapes, bottom tapes. So I've used my sub laminates along with my grouping of plies to make quite a detailed um, stack up in, in laminate space. Now, if we just want to give someone this laminate, we can export this laminate family to Excel. And if I open this up, you can see that this is a very tidy way, I've compressed it, but this is a very tidy way of, of documenting just the stack up with the, with the number of plies, the angle, and what type of plies you've got with the laminate thicknesses. So my bulkhead laminate has got a base thickness of 24 millimeters, and I can see all the thickness of, of my different um, of my different sublaminates or reinforcements. Okay. So we can also export this to um, to other FEA softwares. We can create a laminate report from this, or we can export it to Excel as we just did. Um, yeah. So this is really the base point for our our design. Okay, so we've got our material selection, we've got our laminates selection and defined. The next thing to, to do would be to analyze this further. So we can go into section space to do, create 2D sections for, for beams. We can go into FE space to create shell or grillage models, but we're going to skip those and go on to those in the next couple of webinars. We're going to jump into yacht scans now. So we need to start defining our scantling. So this is our panels and beams. As you can see, I've, I've chosen a motorboat here. So I've got my deck panels and I've got my hull panels. Uh, if we jump into uh, the deck and we'll create a panel inside first. So again, we've got our name. So let's call this top side one, for example. We have our positions, so these are based on the rules, either hull side, hull bottom, deck, or superstructures, or if it's an internal structure, we've got bulkheads um, or tank structures. So this is on the whole um, hull side as per ISO. And we can select our laminate that we've defined in laminate space just now. Let's uh, hull laminates, let's call this hull. So if, then we've got our position and our laminate defined, we can start defining our geometry. So this is the position in the boat and, and the dimensions of fore and after the panel. There's quite a few nice little pictures on the right. So if you ever get a little bit um, hesitant on whether you're putting the right parameters in, it's very easy just to have a look over and, and check that you're, you're getting the right parameters for your panels or beams. Now, as Lorenzo mentioned earlier, we have a pressure override function. So if you're not working with ISO or GL, or you're working with multi-holes, for example, with the ISO rules, you can easily put in this pressure override and define your own loads from this. Okay, so we've got our panel defined. We can hit save and close, and it'll automatically calculate our, vest, our, um, our panel. So if I jump into one here, you can see that I've got my results on the right of the panel. Um, so I've got quite a lot of requirements, got my uh, both directions, bending, shear force criteria, stiffness criteria by ISO or GL, and my thickness requirements. So I've got a lot of information, I've got a lot of reserve factors which I can tune my laminate to. Now it's very easy to tune your laminate. All we have to do is to edit the panel, and we can jump back into laminar space through, through Yachtscant to update our panel. So just by clicking the edit button, laminar space will open, and then we can play around with our laminate. So uh, if I want to change this to 45 degrees, I can do this very easily. And then I can save and close. Everything, up, everything downstream will update, so anything in section space, anything in FE space, and anything in Yachtscant will be updated automatically. Okay, so as you can see on the left here, um, 
my deck aft laminate has been applied to a few different laminates. So we've got a, a blue arrow indicating that we need to calculate our sections again. So if we save this uh, panel, you can see that the results are updated. Um, I've got slightly slightly lower results, so that's that's better. We're going on the route to optimization. Okay, so let's save and close this. You can also review your loads within within your scan. So once we've got our panel defined, we can have a look at the loads. This will give you the, your design pressure, your design loads, and then your factor design loads based on your material partial factors, which you can then grab and take into laminar space to do a bit more optimization or design if required. Uh, it's really up to you how you use it. And then in our results tab, we've just got a bit more detail into, into our results, our reserve factors, where they are, what they apply to, um, and what they're applicable to. Okay, so we have our panels defined. The next thing we need to do is we're going to define a few beams. So in our hull, I'm going to right click and create a beam inside. So it's exactly the same process. Right click on the topology group, create great beam inside. So let's call this top side one. Okay, so we've got our beam type. We've got a multitude of uh, different beam types. So we've got L flange, T flange, top hat hollow, and top hat with former. So let's go with the top hat former. You can see that the schematic on the right hand side has been updated and gives you a, quite a nice view uh, of the elements and the widths that it takes into account for your beams. So we've got our stiffener orientation, so this is longitudinal transverse, and our position again based on ISO or GL. So let's go hull. And then we can select the amount, uh, the reinforcements that we're going to apply. So whether we have any side tapes, uh, capping, any bonding, or inner skin or outer skin reinforcement, we can simply tick or untick um, to, to apply these to the beam. So the same as we did with the panel, we've got our beam position, so our longitudinal, vertical, and horizontal position. Um, we have our beam geometry. So this is our height and the width of our beam. This is when we start defining our reinforcement elements. So we've got our capping. So we can make this uh, the width that we need. And let's say we go for 20 plies. And our material dropdown is directly linked with anything that's in CMDB. So in our selections that we created earlier, um, this gives you a list so you can you can really filter out the materials that you're going to use or you want someone to use within their vessel. So let's go for a, a unidirectional carbon. And again, if you update anything in, in CMDB, it will automatically be updated downstream through the rest of Composite. So we define our capping, we can define our side tapes exactly the same way. We can define our shear web um, exactly the same way with our our CMD main materials and we've got our plating as well so we're going to choose uh, a whole laminate and again we can optimize this by clicking edit we can jump back into laminate space to play around with this this laminate and again pressure override so generating a panel on the beam are very very similar and we've got the same process so when we have a look at our results they'll be in a very similar um, format so you can see that my outer skin is failing so I can jump into my beam and in my outer skin reinforcement what I can do is I can make this two plies save and close and it will automatically update you can see that I'm okay now now if we want to have a look at our beam within um, let's say we want to extract this data make a 2d section and analyze it in in FE space we can grab the loads directly from Yachtscant. So we can take our factor design loads, our moments and our, our shear forces and import those into, into section space or FE space. And again, results, if we want to have a bit more detail of, of the description of, of our reserve factors, we can do this within the results tab. Okay, so we have our vessel defined. We've got our beams and we've got our panels. This is usually the end of the analysis um, for our scantling. So what we can do now is we can create a few reports 
uh, we can create a bill of materials report, a laminar space report, and uh, a yacht scan report. So if we create a yacht scan report very quickly, what we can do is we can grab our vessel and we can create yacht scan report directly from this. Now, as Lorenzo mentioned earlier, this, this is a standard template that we supply. You can also add your own template or grab ours, modify it, put your logo uh, above it. So let's call this yacht scan report. We can grab a uh, report template. So this is, we want it to be certified to ISO and we click save. So it's grabbing all of the data from our vessel and it will compile it in one neat tidy report which we can have, we can export, share, uh, issue. So report space is a nice little versioning tool where you can keep control of your issues. Uh, every time you update something, you can create a new revision, which will then create um, an issue log. So you know who's done what, uh, when they've done it, and, uh, and then update. So there are a few ways of sharing it. We can share a link using a, a specific revision or just the latest revision. So if you give someone the second link, when they click on it, if you've updated the revision, then they will automatically get the latest one. We can also export to HTML or, or generate a PDF. So if we have a look at the HTML document, you can see that I've got my vessel details, my material properties, my laminates, um, then my general data for my beams, and panels. So there's quite a lot of information. Everything that you've defined will be in this report. So it takes very, very little time to put this together. Um, and it, it's very, very detailed. So there's not much chance of you missing out anything um, if you create it by hand. Okay, so we've created our certification report. One other thing to, to do would be to create a bill of materials for our vessel. So for this, we need to jump into BombGen, where you can see that I have my, uh, my, all my vessels and my, and my products. So I'm going to update my 60-foot motorsports fisher boat. And it's just grabbing all of the data, all of the, the ply data, the areas, the weights, and the costs, and compiling it into one document. So I've got a list of my cores. So I've got a T10, I've got an R63 core. And I've got my, my plies, which I've defined. So it's grabbed it all into one, one place. And what it's done is it's applied our usage and wastage factors. So these are based on our manufacturing um, parameters, how we're manufacturing it, what kind of processing, um, what kind of wastage are we going to have, whether we've got big, big offcuts around this, the sides of our components or not. Um, you can play around with this. Uh, so it's grabbed all the automatic data. What we can do now is we can also add manual elements. So we can create a surface element. So if we define a laminate for, a, for um, sole boards or something, we can bring that in, apply an area to it, and Composite will do the rest. We can also create a beam. So we can do this manually, or we can bring in our section space beam automatically, um, and it'll it, you can assign a length to it, and it'll it'll calculate the, the volume of materials that you require. Again, bonding. So if you've got that sole panel, you can apply a bonding to that. And then reinforcements as well. So you can either do it completely manually, or you can define it within section space, FE space, and laminar space, and bring it all in. Now from here, we can export a laminate table. So if I go into the hull, and I'll export a laminate table for my whole group, which will bring in my beams and my, my panels. Now, this is quite a tidy one to bring into your engineering drawing. So I've got a stack up of my, of my materials or my laminate. I've got the orientation and I've got the coverage. So from this, it's, it's calculated my edge overlaps, my thickness, my cured weights, my cured thickness my surface area, and these are all based on our, our usage and wastage factors, which you can then copy and paste directly into your engineering drawing. So you only have to define it in one place. You don't have to recreate your stack up. Okay. So this is our bill of materials. 
we've got our laminate table out of this, but we want to create a more formal report and we want to create a version of this of this vessel. So exactly the same as we did before. Right click and create a bond, bond gen report. So this will bring us back into report space where we can say this is our bomb gen report and it will grab all of the data once we use our our save so bill of materials all components with cost save it's grabbed all of the data from bomb gen and it's compiling it into one report uh, which we can share exactly the same as we did with the, we did with our yacht scan report we can generate a pdf um, we can share it with an HTML or a link. Okay, so this is our report. You can see that we've got a product summary down to a bill of materials of cost, weight estimate, component summary. Um, all the way down, you can see it's very, very detailed. All of our laminate definition, our physical properties, mechanical properties, So, with, we, what we've just done is we've created our vessel within project space. We've selected, uh, created, and uh, compared our materials within CMDB. We've then used these materials in our selections to create a laminate stack up with different subcomponents, uh, different areas, single skin, sandwich laminate, um, areas of reinforcement. And then we've created our, our beams and panels within Yotscant, created a bill of materials report, uh, bill of materials, and then reported this in report space along with the certification report. Okay. So there are another another few functions that we could do within within Composite. Another one is a, is a typical midship section analysis. So we want to find out the bending capability of our section. So we've already got our inputs. We've got our material selection. We've got our laminate definition. All we have to do is bring in our geometry into uh, or bring it in or or create it manually within within section space. Apply our laminates with, which we've already got and then designed with the number of requ uh, required number of reinforcements, add the amount of patches that we need, the number of tapes along the deck, for example. Optimize this using our material selection and laminate definition, and then it will automatically update. We can have a check of, of the deck strain, for example, and then until we're happy with our, with our results, which then we can go into, um, into a section space report for a global, a global section. So we've shown you a way of, of creating your vessel and analyzing your scantlings within Composite. Where is it going to be, where is it used? Um, so we've got a few successful project examples where Composite has been used within, within the marine industry. So the first example is a 116 foot uh, racing cruising yacht. So as you can see here on the top left, we've used uh, a 3D grillage analysis using section space an FE space uh, to create a main a bulkhead structure. You can also use uh, a shell model to create this, but it's at, at the time it was a lot easier to understand what was going on with this beam model. Again, we have a hundred foot yacht, uh, Wally Cento. We analyzed the the main sheet structure of, of this boat within Composite using again a, a green a frame and grillage model. And we've got a 45 foot high performance racing yacht. Uh, we, this, this whole boat was done within Composite, so we did our scantling analysis within Yacht Scant. And a few detailed design bits, you can see that we did a lifting gantry for the keel um, as a shell model within FE space. And we've got a high speed power boat. So this is, uh, this is a power boat that does 45 knots, and it's got three, um, three 400 horsepower engines, so it's pretty nippy. And we did the, uh, all of this yacht, all of this powerboat within Composite, including the keel grill, uh, the engine grillage, as you can see in the top left corner. And again, uh, another 76 foot sailing yacht. You can see that we did quite a detailed analysis of, 
of the deck and cockpit um, structure with the top sides with, uh, with the rigging analysis or the rigging loads. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. So uh, <clears throat> what, what we have here is um, it's a bit of a different example. It's about the uh, using materials in design and engineering. Is a webinar we ran actually in early earlier this year in January uh, between Composite ourselves and, and and 3A, um, but it was also important for for us to um, to show a bit of what our clients think of Composite um, after using it. So you can see the quote here. There is the link to the um, webinar itself um, again on YouTube if you would like to uh, should like to review it. But the idea in in principle is being able to automatically generate a bit of material for any marine vessel, um, sailing boat or motorboat according to a selection of materials uh, that are provided by, by 3A. And the second example is just the announcement came out uh, earlier this week, um, so you may have seen communication in that sense, but it's a strong endorsement from uh, Uden and Rolik for Composite, so we've been very happy to have that shared. Uh, with with our uh, supporters, so <clears throat> we're now getting right to the to the end of the uh, of the presentation. It's probably just a couple of slides left, and the question and answers uh, session. We still have about five six minutes. Um, what we thought to demonstrate today is that um, with composite and yoscan, whether you're designing uh, sailing yachts, whether you're designing motorboats. Um, is a suite of tools that can bring you unimproved efficiency in your design cycle. Everything is interconnected, um, so it allows you to make changes, create reports, um, going back to the original design, uh, really with, with a ease of use that is unique to, to Composite. The, the software itself is easily accessible and scalable. Uh, we're, we're very transparent on the pricing, everything is on the website, um, so you can see that uh, Everything is included in a standard package with two users, no geographical restrictions, no machine restrictions. Um, so you can take it with you when you're traveling around the world. Um, or if you have a, an engineering group that is um, that is based on different locations, let's say US, Europe, and, uh, and Australia or New Zealand, why not? Um, we have experience working with, with Composite that even on a single project, you can save days and days of engineering resources. Uh, think about the creation of your laminate tables. Think about how long it would take to create a bill of material that is accurate uh, for an entire vessel. And this is something that can instantly be generated with, with Composite. You're reducing the errors, but you're also saving extremely valuable man time. Working with standard templates helps you to improve the quality and the consistency of your deliverables. We mentioned section space reports, laminate tables, um, or laminate reports, bill of materials, scantling reports. Everything is pre-formatted, collecting the information from within Composite itself that you have input and allows you to basically output all those data in a consistent um, way, improving your deliverables. And hopefully all of that results in, in a reduced uh, project cost. Um, what it means is that if you're able to you know, make your project faster, make your project cheaper, not only you can work on more projects, you can do more business, or you can gain new customers. So what, what, is, uh, what is quite unique about our uh, this five webinar series is that everything you've seen John working on today uh, we'll, uh, we'll start sharing it tomorrow morning with you uh, from within Composite. So basically, if you just, when you register for the, is a 30 days free trial, no commitment, um, you just need a phone number to receive, a, a mobile phone number to receive a verification code. <coughs> Sorry, but then you're, you're ready to start. And so what you do is that you can, aim, you can gain access to the marine project itself. So you can look at the structure of the cruise racer. You can look at the motorboat. There is inside the, um, the keel and the grillage example. You can look at the laminates and the analysis all by yourself. Or we can also create your own design in composite. 
And um, although it is a free trial, it may come to surprise that we actually do support and train for all our users. There are numerous uh, videos tutorials that you can access straight from within uh, being logged into Composite. Um, there is a live chat, so whenever you have a quick question, uh, we just click on a button and you have uh, John and his colleagues that are ready to give you a quick answer if possible. And then email support, obviously fax and webinars. Uh, a detailed knowledge base and technical documentation if you really want to dig into the equation of the functionalities the, the behind the software. And, and alongside those uh, composites offers uh, on, on a separate scale dedicated training, whether it's design training, composites training, or uh, engineering services in the form of either structural design or engineering sign-off, anything you can think of related to the usage of uh, composites and structural engineering in, in, in marine applications. Okay, so if you, there are a few questions that came up uh, during, the, uh, during the webinar. If you, have, uh, if you have other questions, please do feel free to type them. Uh, we only have a couple of minutes, but in any case, we'll try to get back to you as soon as the, um, as soon as, uh, the webinar is ended, so in the coming, in the coming few days. Um, the first question is about the size of the boat restrictions, um, 50 meters, for example, or John, do you want to? So in Composite, there, is, uh, well, there are two aspects to, to consider. One is what you're doing in your, in your design and modeling. This is, let's say, the 2D and 3D elements. Uh, there are no such restrictions there in in what you do. I mean, we can design from wind turbines to large super yachts to very small components. Um, if you, if on the other hand, you look at the scantling um, options, then the report in itself for the ISO certification will have to comply to certain rules, and that will be within the um, ISO Part 5 and the GL, which is from is it 6 to John? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, if, if you're talking about the, um, the, the scantling sizes, then the, there, is a, uh, there is a limitation there. And are there other, are we okay with rhinoloids or ABS? Um, well, we, we dev, we're implementing more as we, uh, as we can. In fact, uh, you know, if, uh, I think following the webinar, I'll ask you generally which, uh, which certification you use, so I gather more feedback and we know what to push forward faster as part of Composite. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, if overriding the pressure of getting the reports is fine with, uh, with whatever certification you have. It's just the report is going to be slightly differently formatted. Uh, there is another question here, this is probably more for you, John, which says, um, does the analysis provide effects of stiffness change when using mixed materials in a design? Uh, so Composite works with um, a laminate stack analysis, so this is advanced, advanced laminate stack analysis. So uh, anything that, that is covered within, um, within the, a basic composite design will be, will be catered for in, in Yachtscant. Um, and obviously if, if you're using a, a, mix, a mixed group of materials, so if you're using carbon and glass, then Composite will take this into account. So the, car, the carbon is obviously going to be more critical. Uh, it's going to take more load, it's stiffer. Um, this also works with when you're using metals and composites or plastics, woods, etc., which we all have in, in, uh, in CMDB. Yeah, that's, that's a good point because there was a following question on uh, you mentioned working with metals, but you haven't showed much. Uh, today is true. Today we today we haven't uh, showed much in terms of metals, uh, but there is, as I mentioned, this is this is a series of webinars. So what you see here are the upcoming ones that will have um, the components designing both metals and composites. So we'll try to alternate motor and sailing uh, vessel um, structure or components with metals and composites to just give it. A wider, uh, a wider interest. And so, for example, next week, on um, 14th of July, uh, we'll be looking in detail on how creating uh, engine girder and kill structures, so beams and grillages. On the 21st, 
uh, we're gonna focus more on detailed uh, component design with rudders and uh, and kill design down to the uh, very end of the month on the 28th which is basically the uh, uh, advanced design webinar this time we'll be looking at elements such as bulkheads and penetration reinforcements with really a, a how can we define um, a complex stack up of laminate patches zones and just show how composite is still a tool that can be used and has been used in um, in those projects uh, successfully in, in the past uh, which brings me to the um, to our conclusion here is when when you'll be closing the um, the go to webinar window uh, a web page will pop up with just three or four simple questions and a little rating um, appreciate your feedback it helps us to improve our webinars and understand what is it that you would like to see more um, during those sessions and just a reminder as you registered for the first webinar uh, you don't need to register to any of the others uh, that's automatically carried over um, so you won't even receive the invitations you just have a reminder a couple of days before um, of the webinar coming up so just as you know Okay, so if you have further questions, please uh, feel free to uh, write to support at composite.com or info at composite.com. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, again, remember there is a free uh, free trial where you can access all those projects um, available from the um, Composite website. And um, we hope to see you uh, next week. Same. Same time on when? No, Thursday. Thursdays, yeah. Yeah, Thursday, the 14th of July. And thank you for your attendance. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone.